On today's show, how to send your music to radio. This is 30 Minute Music Marketing. 30 Minute Music Marketing. For musicians who want to get better at marketing their music. Hi, I'm Greg. Hello, I'm Sheldon, and this is 30 Minute Music Marketing, the show for independent artists and DIY musicians who want to get better at marketing their music. And it's a very special episode uh, on this edition, Greg, because we've got a special guest. We do. It's like, you know, I mean, she is with us virtually. I I mean, I know she does exist, really, but obviously through the powers of technology, we are (laughs) we have our we have our first three way. And uh, Katie, welcome to the show. So please give us <laughs> yeah, okay. give us a brief introduction of who you are and what you do. Uh, my name's Katie J. I've been on radio for 21 years. Um, I've worked in community radio, student radio. Um, I'm currently on independent radio. I've done a little bit with BBC in the West Midlands. Um, I've done some voiceover work for commercial radio as well. Um, I had a mini stint on Galaxy when it existed. I won a chance to do that. Um, And 21 years later, I'm still loving this. I'm currently a presenter for a programme on Skylab Radio, uh, which is in Manchester, although we broadcast to the south and online. And we're a chill-out, down-tempo lounge, trip-hop, ambient and soft house station. Mm -hmm. And I've got a show on a Monday evening called Mixed Feelings. Okay. So a long so, and illustrious career, a career even. Um, long. I don't know about illustrious. <laughs> <laughs> so, it's been a challenge and a good journey at the same time. So during the lockdown, the most important question I have to ask you is: Have you managed to get a haircut? No. <laughs> no. Neither have I. I. That's why I'm wearing a hat. Yeah, before lockdown, my hair was up here, and as you can see, I've got. No blonde left, as I'm a dark blonde by nature and all my lovely blonde's grown out and it's, it's down here now, so no. And I'm highly likely not to get a haircut till September at the moment. September? Yeah. Oh. I'm on a waiting list. Oh, dear. Are they specialists? <laughs> um, I've got fine hair, so they te- they, my hairdresser knows how to deal with it because, to be honest, it's like cutting candy floss, so, yeah. Goodness, goodness. <laughs> it's anyway... Nightmare. The reason we got you on, Katie, is that obviously you, you've you've worked in radio for for many a year, and we just thought we'd get uh, an expert on to discuss how DIY musicians would be best to send uh, their music to radio. Because I noticed from your Twitter that you that you have maybe a lot of gripes as to the things <laughs> that they do wrong. So I just thought maybe this is a, a great platform to try and advise more musicians of how to do it. Right. Yeah, I well, think I have probably been quite vocal over the light, the lockdown, particularly. Uh, we've had a lot of music. We've just had under 1,000 pieces of music sent. Um, so, yeah, a little bit of gripe, but more so I try and help people by giving them some signposting, but not necessarily rude ones. OK. Now, what would you say maybe to a DIY musician who might be listening to this and they might say, oh, I, d- I don't think radio's uh, important anymore. Streaming is, is what everybody's mm. sort of concerned and bothered with. And maybe that's where yeah. I should put all my promotional efforts. Would you, you know, how would you maybe counteract the argument and, you know, stand up uh, for for the likes of radio as a... Uh, for radio. Yeah. Um, well, obviously, streaming is really important, so I'm not going to knock streaming. Um, there's a lot of discussion at the moment about how streaming works for musicians, but that's a different topic. However, um, a lot of people are discounting radio as an opportunity to get their music heard by people that actually want to buy it. Um, a lot of people that listen to streaming through research actually want the what we call the passive kind of audience situation where it's on in the background um, it'll pick what I want to listen to by algorithm. Oh, that sounds nice. I'll just like that. And then it's added to a playlist that just sits there, although that does help the musician a little bit. Um, but with radio, um, there's a conscious decision to pick a station, send your music to that station, have a human being actually listen to that, profile it and say, yeah, I really like that. I think my audience will get that. Um, and I'm going to put that on air. So that's the key difference. 
Um, in terms of stats, um, there's been a recent radio report that's gone out during lockdown, actually, um, that says through um, Ofcom and Rajar, they've said that nine out of ten people are still listening to radio once a week um, and will actually tune in to a designated programme of choice that they really like. Um, because there's quite a lot of niche programming, especially with the onset of community radio. And we've also got the coming up of the DAB licences, the small scale DAB licences that are being released over the next 12 months. So you're going to see a lot more niche stations coming through um, on DAB and DAB itself is becoming a stronger product. So um, for myself, I stand on the side of radio being a preferential choice in sending music because it's handled, it's cared for and it's passionate about when somebody talks about it on air. Yeah, because uh, streaming is very much, as you say, it's it's a lean back medium. It, it is in the background, and I, I tend to find that if you if you build up a, a relationship with maybe a presenter or a producer on radio, that relationship is something yeah. that that really benefits a particular artist. And even For with sure. even with sort of listeners to to smaller sort of radio stations, the you uh, the people that tend to listen to those probably have a greater connection and you know a greater desire to to connect with the the artists that are making the music yeah. on those sort of stations than maybe yeah, for sure. than those on a you know on a, on a larger sort of national platform yeah it's not just the listeners as well it's um, it's about connecting musicians with other musicians as well um, for example, I mean, we're a very small station. We broadcast on DAB in Norwich and Portsmouth at the moment. Uh, we've just gone part of a multiplex. We're going to go live in the Channel Islands later in the year. Um, and there's other plans to spread around the UK on different DAB, obviously, as we build relationships with the small-scale DAB licence holders. But um, obviously, when you connect with someone, it might be that you play a song and another musician's actually listening and they think, oh, my God, that's like exactly like what I want to do or I really dig that person and I really want it. And I've made some really good connections for people. We've got a, an artist in Guernsey called Flexagon who recently took over a local centre to, before uh, lockdown, obviously, to exhibit his work with another like sound installation engineer. So all his work was also linked to video footage. So it was a, a totally interactive exhibition. Uh, and then another gentleman, completely unrelated from the Southwest, a uh, lovely chap called Simon McCorry, um, he sent me a beautiful song, which I played, and Flexagon contacted me while I was on air and said, who's that, you know, um, I need to know who that person is because that's excellent music. So I connected them and they're now working on an exhibition for next year of sound installation because both have got skills the other wants and they're going to collaborate on a sound exhibition for Simon's work in London or in the Southwest next year. So it's, it's, it's got, there's other fertile opportunities when you work with radio, because not only have you got an access to so many listeners that we can quantify, and we know they're real people because we can see them connected to the online server. We can see who's on our streams, not literally, but by IP address. So we know where in the world people are listening, but we can also as well kind of guide people to work with others that enhances their career and gives them collaborative opportunities in gigs, um, in working together on production, um, and also just working stronger together, really, on lots of different things that expands their skill set, really. So it, it's got a lot of, lot of merits, I think, radio that people don't actually realise. That's brilliant. That's brilliant. So you've convinced me as a DIY musician that I should, <laughs> be, yeah, I should definitely <laughs> be sending the music to radio. So now is an opportunity to get all those gripes off your chest. What would you say are the biggest mistakes that you see people make when they mm. attempt to submit music to yourself? What yeah. are the big, what are the, the really big ones that you see time and time again? <laughs> well, I don't want to come across like I'm picking on artists because in fairness no because... please just please just say it as it is <laughs> oh, <they're> okay. <laughs> tough um, love Katie well, tough love come tough on. love right I'm coming with a tough love um, I think my listeners get that off me anyway they know that when they look at my Twitter it's there's a bit of like she said it <laughs> so I do say <laughs> I'm not, and I'm not afraid to say it actually um I think that because people discount radio as a, a valid 
um, kind of transmission source and a valuable way of getting the music out there. I think the first thing they do is they actually ignore sending music to a station. So they'll follow me on Twitter um, and then they'll send me a, a Twitter message, um, which has got my bugbear, which is a Spotify link in it which is listen to my 307 songs and 17 albums here and pick what you like. The answer is no. We don't do that. That's not the role of a radio presenter. And I think that going back and dialing back to the beginning and having a music strategy to start off with, which is why I follow Sheldon online, because all this stuff with music marketing is very good help with strategizing your approach on how and where you're sending your music. So the first thing that any, any artist really needs to do is research. And there is a ton of stuff online that can help you look at where stations are, what they play, who their key people are, and then from there, click through. And it takes you then through to Twitter, Facebook, websites, and, and just find out before an artist actually sends a piece of work in um, is what does this station do and do I want this station actually handling my mm. work? Look at the DJs that kind of present on there. How do they treat the artists that they're working with? How how listen to this, you know, the shows and the station? And is this the sound that I represent? So before you even start is have that in your strategy, because if you just throw it, what I call monkey muck flinging, which is just I'm going to send music out to every single person on a mailing list and I'm going to say, yeah, I'm a big fan of your station. I listen every week and I'm a right fit for you. Sorry, you're not. If we play chill and down tempo and you're sending me techno kraut rock, then I'm sorry, but you haven't listened to our station and it's not what I can use. And then I have to use my time as an unpaid presenter because I don't get paid for what I do, as do most radio professionals. Unless you're in commercial or the BBC environment, you don't get paid. You do it for the love of the music. You know, that's kind of 20 minutes off my time, rooting through stuff, thinking, why have you sent me this work? It's great, but and on a personal level, I might really love it, but I can't play this. So I've now got to respond to you and say, sorry, but no. So then they might send me another one track and then another one track. And, you know, it's just setting that relationship from the get go, really, as to write, who am I sending my stuff to? Do I sound like what they play? Do I like what they do? And who are the key people that I can get my music to that are going to put it on air? I mean, obviously, What's for your- BBC, it's different. I was going to say, oh, Katie, ahead. what's the what's the preferred method for you to receive new music? Well, we're a digital station. We're virtual. Um, so we will go into a partner studio in Manchester. We're very lucky as we've got some very strong radio links with community radio around Greater Manchester. So they're mm-hmm. very kind in loaning our studio space quite often for us to record programmes. Obviously, we've been on lockdown, <laughs> so I've got my trusty <laughs> laptop and a Rode microphone and my lovely big headphones where we can actually dial into the radio station from the server, put on what I need, and then obviously use my microphone then to go across the airwaves to record and using software on my laptop to mix. So because we're virtual, we want digital music, but there are some stations that are still static address and community stations particularly that have a static address that are local FM as well as online often want music physically. So again, it's down to the musician to look at or have a conversation with the station and say, you know, how do I need to send you this music or I'll send you something that's pre-prepared that has everything in as a toolkit that you need and just take what you want. So for us, um, for server size, we use we still use MP3. Um, the, the 320K is the most lossless of the MP3s and it's the one that when it's compressed to go out through the DAB stream on 192, get a bit techy mm-hmm. then, um, it doesn't it's sound right. glitchy. Right. So... But we will get sent WAVs and we will accept those. But when I've got 270 submissions of WAVs, I've yeah. actually got to convert those to MP3 before I can. So it's just having a bit of consideration for how does that station operate, really, and like how can I make it easy, really? So, so your, your, your advice <laughs> is, to, to, is maybe do the necessary research with the station in question and Correct. try and, that try is and my find absolute out. Yeah. First, yes, yeah. There's a really good website, actually, that, a lot of musicians don't know exist where you can look up radio stations in UK, Ireland and Australia, which have 
quite a lot of audience share with radio, and it's media.info. Media.info, if you type that in and then look for UK, Ireland and Australia, you can then search all radio stations, online, community, or um, BBC-related or commercial, and it tells you what they play, who their presenters are, and how you can get in touch with them, including a submission email address, if they have one. That's pretty cool. So do you, you mentioned about, you know, formats 320 kilobytes per second for MP3. Um, do you ever knock yeah. back all um, records because the audio quality isn't what you're looking for? I have to. Um, if I, I, I put my name to every artist I choose to play on my programme because mm-hmm. my show is a bit weird in the fact that I play established artists, but I, I'm a great believer that independent and self-releasing artists stand shoulder to shoulder with those with big deals. And I want to prove that their music is as good as other people. So I want it to stand shoulder to shoulder. And that's been my approach since I've worked with Unsigned Band since 2009. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. I'm a great believer in also pushing quality from a, or an artist's perspective because sometimes that can be quite lazy in the output of music, as in it's not mastered. It's not been saved in a great format. You know, it's just going to go on someone's phone. Well, 90 kilobits per second from an iPhone sounds absolutely dreadful when you're bumping that up with a compressor to 192. I I can't hear what they're singing, saying, or otherwise. Um, So it, it has to have some level of value and quality before they send it in, because if you don't value your work, then how can I work with it? I can't make a silk purse out of a sow's ear, so to speak. I can't make the music sound better if it's saved in a format or at a quality level or recorded in a way that just is not radio friendly. And the endless conversations that I have with artists, giving that kind of feedback, find a good mix and masterer, you know, save it in a better quality, you know, have a look at this midline, have a look at your top levels, have a look at your bass, um, go and sit in your car and listen to it on your stereo in the car because that is your best way of knowing if your music's going to play on radio or not because that is common across all devices really in terms of sound quality. If it sounds good on your car stereo, then it's going to sound good on a phone and it's definitely going to sound good across a DAB radio or the device that plays that. Okay, good tips. Brilliant. brilliant. So in addition to the audio, um, what sort of extra information as a presenter would you like to see accompanying each sort of track or submission do you, do, do you want do you want a particular artist's life history or just information about the track or a bit of both sort of a bit uh... of both really um it depends what level of support they want because we'll often get what we call chances which are like one hit wonder people or people that just want to see can i get my song on radio because they want to brag oh, Skylab played my this or Rossendale Radio played my that or BBC Introducing in Manchester likes my thing and then they put the badge on a photo, which is great because you prove to yourself that you've got something that people want to listen to or that someone believes in your work. But then you've also got the artists that have got this strategy to release in music and they may have a number of releases on an EP or an album, dates in which they're going to release that Um, but then send you the whole EP or the whole album with no idea of like, okay, what's the lead single? Is there an embargo on what tracks I can play? Because do you want this streamed on the internet, saved on Mixcloud, downloaded through iHeartRadio and then on somebody's device who then uploads that to YouTube and then you've got copyright issues with distributors? Um, Sometimes I'll just send you a song from an email address that relates not to the band that they're in and you don't even know who they are. Um, here's my track play it is my favorite one liner that I get quite a lot the answer is then often no I won't because one I don't know who you are and two you've not made any effort to introduce yourself to me so a nice introductory email that says this is me this is my music I've attached I have listened to you I've done my research I think this is a fit but please give me some feedback here is a link to my google drive Um, here is a yum code for Bandcamp or any other streaming site that you use where you've got a code that you can access the music from. Um, What do you prefer it in, bro? I've got everything saved in one place. Here's our electronic press kit, which only needs to be one PDF page with some links to where I can find other reviews or a website or activity where we can connect on Twitter and Facebook so I can see what you're up to and talk you up. 
and here's my plan of what I'm releasing. And I also don't want you to play X, Y, and Z, but I would really like it if you'd play da and da. If you could send me all that, my job's a dream. I just download the music, I listen to it, I like it. I'll write back and say, yeah, I'm going to put that on on Monday. Thanks for all this information, just to check maybe pronunciations of strange names of bands because we have some really unusual ones. So case in point, we've got a really lovely musician who sends work and it's spelt N-N-Y-Z with a question mark. And I'm like, how do I say that? And he goes, oh, you pronounce it knee. So I need to know these things because otherwise I'm going to say noise, noise. <laughs> do you know? And then you sound like an idiot. So that relationship is being built from the get-go because somebody is giving you all the tools you need to make the best job possible. And those are the kind of people I like to work with. But because we have so many young artists coming through who are not of a radio age, so don't understand how to interact with radio I do spend a lot more time with artists like that, giving them some support on where where do I, you know, register for PRS, you know, where, where, and so I get a lot of questions that are not related to music as well, but I'm quite happy to help people if they're helping themselves, not the, I'm on Spotify, check me out. The answer's no, I'm not, I'm sorry. We don't actually accept Spotify or YouTube links at all because we don't stream from there and people a lot of people think actually that's i just connect to that stream and i just press play and it's just coming through the dab we we can't do that you know off com licensed and all that the quality yeah. of music we have to have that physical music we have to know what that music's about especially if it's um, in a different language so if it's in a different language send us a translation so i'm not telling somebody that you know your mother's a mm, and your grandmother's a, mm, but in your language it sounds really beautiful like you're singing to the moon that's no good to me <laughs> at all um it's the same as with expletives they are my <clears throat> at the moment part of the culture of a band might be that a swear word is used if you've done your homework and you see that we're an ofcom registered station you'll know full well not to send us anything with swear words in or you've done the work by removing the expletive with a wah wah just do that work don't expect me to do it because sometimes i've had to because i really like the song and then i get the email back oh could we have that copy back so we can send it to someone else <laughs> oh, now you're blooming my <laughs> Cheeky. i've done the work i'm hanging on to it i shouldn't have to but them are the main gripes the things because if you don't do your research you don't build the relationship <laughs> <laughs> Bless. Uh, <laughs> that's not me by the way <laughs> um i'm not barking at you um if you don't do she's shouting that, again sheldon <laughs> oh i'm shy. um and then basically um we can't work together and radio should be respected for that really for the work they do and they don't get that respect Okay, so I've submitted the audio in the correct fashion. I've given you all the additional information that you needed. You liked the music and you played it on your show. Oh, Thank I have. Much. Thank you very much for that. So how many artists that um, would you say, oh, maybe let's put it this way. Is it is it best practice if, as an artist, I've been played to contact you afterwards to say, yeah. Oh, thank you very much. And and what sort of percentage of people nice. do that, would you say? Not as many as you'd like to think. Yes. Um, and you, what, what kind of upsets me, I think, on a personal level um, is when I've gone all out to promote someone's EP or someone's album and they can't even be bothered on Twitter to say thank you. What tends to happen is the following day, I go to message them to say, did you get a chance to listen? And I've been unfollowed. That oh. just honestly, it heartbreaks me. Shade. Same on face. And then it is, and then you see them friended another radio station using the same stuff with the same kind of, can you play me? I'm so grateful. And then they do the same to them. And in fairness, that's taking without giving. And I think music is an energy and, and an interaction between radio and, and musicians is quite a symbiotic relationship. So if you're, giving someone your music to play and they play it and they talk about it like they love it, like it's the best thing they've ever heard. And, God, I want you to be so massive because, well, you know, I've talked about you, Emmett so many times about how much I love you. And, you know, so I put a lot of passion behind because I really fall in love with music. The last thing I want is a broken heart with, you know, you can't even say thanks for doing that or even sharing or cross, um, oh, 
cross, I can't think of, you're cross pollinating the, the the things that we post up by sharing those with other people and saying these played me and they're going to be on mixed cloud and you can listen again and to me if I was a musician I'd want to keep shouting that these guys have played me and I'm going to be on there and I'm on there for you know for posterity and and I'd, I'd then want to kind of message someone and say, can I have some feedback? Or if you don't have time, can I send you something else? Because I really got a buzz out of hearing myself on air and I love the way you spoke about me. That to me is the dream. But eight to 10 percent, I'd say, of all artists that we work with have got that. Um, I have to admit some of that, though, because we do get some work from distributors um, and promoters. Promoters tend to be quite good these days because they've got a strong online presence and it builds their profile when they've managed to get an artist onto a radio station by sending it to you and asking you to send it so very often I will get some really lovely messages back um and there's some artists on the other end of the scale that just you know if I could make heart emojis they'd be flying over me like daily because they just love what we're doing and They've been great. I've got some artists that have been following the programme for the last six months that still message every time I'm on air saying, great show, really enjoyed it. Or have you had a chance to listen to my so-and-so yet? Could you tell me when I'm going to be on? So they are doing that relationship really well. Yeah, I suppose you know, in, in the same way that we always say in, in terms of, of an artist and their fans, if you're if you're trying to build a relationship, if you take an interest in them, then they yeah. are more likely to take an interest in you. That, For sure. That goes on and, you know, and works its way to, to other areas of the industry as well. For sure. I think um, my other bugbear, I think, as well, that I don't understand and maybe, I don't know, I'm not going to say it's an age thing because of where I am on my journey with technology, but because I'm still quite up to date, um, is I probably don't understand the amount of, you know, lashing over um, Spotify list curators. You know, I've played your stuff on air. I've actually chosen you over someone else for a programme and I've talked about you and you're actually on Mixcloud and you're going to be there for others to listen to and I link to your band camp or wherever you're selling your music and then you're, you know, lashing over some stranger who's added you to a list and has listened. That, I think, is also wrong. I think you need to be mindful of the the image that you're also portraying on social media as to where you're casting your attentions because a radio station is much less likely to be interested in you if all you're doing is salivating over someone who's just added you to a three-and-a-half million person list and they might have put you in at number 20 you know it don't often work like that they've just dropped you in they're like you're on to the next thing it's fast food music i've heard it i don't want to listen to you anymore i'm on to the next people with radio come back because they want to listen to what you're playing and they want to hear it again so nine times out of ten when artists have made the effort i'll stick them on a second time or a third time i'll do a best of compilation i mean we do use spotify don't get us wrong because we want to recognise the artists that have been played on the station and we want people who can't reach us to be able to interact because we're all about accessibility on the station. Some people, for whatever reason, don't listen to radio, but they will listen on their own kind of device to their own thing. So we try and put a quarterly playlist together for Spotify by gathering all those artists who are on there that we've played so that people can listen to that list. And we do get a lot of thanks for that as well, but... We do a hell of a lot of work to get people on air and, and keep them on air for at least 12 months. So we, we want repeat business because we want to help people build a profile and radio is that place. Absolutely brilliant. A, a wealth of mm. tips and information, how to mm. do things and certainly how not to do things. Just a Greg. professional rant I think. <laughs> <laughs> mm. Greg, have you, uh, have you got anything that you'd, uh, you'd, you'd like to ask uh, Katie before the, the end of the episode? I mean, in terms of you've obviously mentioned, you know, in a way you've mentioned a lot of the things that they do need to be doing. And I might be asking something you've already asked when I had to go and basically right. shoot the dog. Uh, so in terms of so. Uh, dog. <laughs> she's a border collie. Uh, oh, nutty. <laughs> what is, I mean, what format is the best form of submission? Do you prefer uh, like an email with an MP3 or does that fill up your email inbox would you rather we, a link to soundcloud you know 
Um, Especially think, if you're getting three twenty kilobytes per second e, um, sure. MP3s, that's going to be quite a yeah. large file. We we have our own. We've got a Google Drive which we use as our workplace. We did look at like Microsoft Teams as well, but it didn't have the flexibility that we want. So we went with Google Drive, and we, had, me and the other presenters on the station and the station director tend to use that space. So often what will happen is um, if you say, for example, you send me a Google Drive link with all your stuff on there, it actually, because you've shared it with me with a registered email address linked to that Google Drive, um, it appears in my shared with me. So I can go straight to it when I log in on a daily basis to – because I produce all the shows as well, so I'll often be uploading music on there for it to be mixed down, ready to go on, because we have some pre-recorded programming as well. Um, so when I go on there, I can see that shared with me straight away. Um, I'd say a lot of artists are embracing that link, so are using Dropbox or Google Drive, or even um, if they can't send a large amount of files because you can't email anything, over a certain size using something like WeTransfer, which is free, um, and it uploads to WeTransfer, and then that's sent across to me as a link for me to download. So I don't physically have it then till I actually download it. But it's, the end problem with that is it's only got seven days. Um, you can set it for longer, but you have to pay. And I'm all about trying to get artists to do everything on a budget. Um, if people send us MP3s, you know, that's fine, but just don't send me a whole album or a set of albums by email or you know because i have to download them all and it takes ages it's easy for me just to access what i want on google drive or dropbox or even yeah. if you've picked something specifically that you want me to listen to sending me a code for somewhere like Bandcamp, where i can actually put the code in it takes me straight to what you've you've linked it to and i can download that in my chosen format because i've got that set on my Bandcamp profile Absolutely, so, but, brilliant. absolutely brilliant. Yeah, the only thing I would say is we get often quite a lot of physical stuff. So pit bands want to send us CDs because they're really into cassette tapes and albums, beautiful vinyls and that at the moment. Um, and I just want to say to artists, we'd love them. We really would love if we're a static station please send them stuff they love stickers they love badges they like anything like that a static address would love that we would love them but because we are virtual and because all of our presenters are spread around all over the uk and they do a lot of stuff from home dialing in we can't physically take that stuff at the moment but if we do we'd gladly receive it it's it's lovely to have something nice physical to collect keep you know it's it's just lovely mm -hmm. but for us at the moment we are on a we're an ecological station we just work virtually with digital well thank you very much indeed for your time Katie Thanks do you want to give me. one last plug for uh, for your show before before we go <laughs> well actually more for the station I'm on on a Monday my show's called Mixed Feelings it's on at 10 o'clock UK and Ireland time 11 o'clock in Europe and I play a mixture of edgy independent and established artists for two hours my station is Skylab Radio and it's skylabradio.com. Katie, thanks very much indeed for, thanks uh, for, for, asking me. Thanks for, for the joining invite. us today. Absolutely wonderful to speak to you Thank as you. always. Oh, bless you both. Nice thanks to see you broadcasting from your studio, Greg, back again. Yes, the dog's annoying me, but yes, we're getting there. Oh, Sl things are slowly getting back to normal, uh, which I'm glad and obviously being able to... Uh, encourage you know have such passionate people like katie on the show kind of obviously a proper music enthusiast who's going to help promote bands when they can't gig at the moment so and it's, I, it's I, I, feel, I feel properly enthused because normally it's just me and you getting together greg having, having a, a good old moan, moan at things yeah. <laughs> so, so it's good to have yeah. some positive vibes on the podcast we did we did quite a lot actually during lockdown um we've been bands that were on band camp that were doing the band camp fridays um, every of one of those we've promoted loads of artists that have been played on there saying if you under the hashtag if you like it buy it um, we link to everything we do with links to music um, and our station was also involved in supporting the health information radio that went out nationally as well which was helping deliver um, COVID-19 facts and support to people that were listening to DAB that were possibly isolated at home. So we've had quite a busy time actually during lockdown. It's been quite flat out, really. <laughs> Thank God I wasn't in my day job. <laughs> Wouldn't have had time to do all this radio, but thanks for asking me along. It's been a pleasure. 
and thank you for for joining us on, on this particular episode. Um, thanks thanks indeed, indeed uh, for you for uh, for watching this on the YouTube's or the Facebooks or listening to it via whatever podcast platform. Uh, Smash the subscribe button. Like, it's send it to a friend. That's all we ask. Uh, and until uh, next week's episode, uh, stay safe, and we'll see you very very soon indeed. Take care. Bye. Bye.